Charitable giving, meditation, and feeding the hungry are all good, honorable actions. But they don't connect us with God. No, they don't. So what does make that connection? Stay with us for the answer from God's Word in today's study. Hello, I'm Woodrow Kroll. I'm Tammy Weisert. And this is Back to the Bible. Well, Wood, connections of all kinds, they're really important to us. Yeah, we try to connect with nature, try to connect with our inner child, and, <laughs> you know, seriously, we try to connect with others. Yeah, so what you're saying is we just have this natural desire for relationships, and that desire, well, it comes by design. It does, and it comes by God's design. Now, we were created by God for God, and I think that entails a growing relationship with Him. Okay, so He's pursuing us, and really, He's the one we need the closest relationship with. You know, oddly enough, though, lots of people out there are looking for God in all the wrong places. It sounds like a country song, doesn't it? Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> really, that's really sad. But, you know, what makes it so sad is that God has already chosen a method to communicate with us, to help us to get to know Him and to grow in our relationship with Him. We can find him right here in the Bible. This is his word to us for today and tomorrow and all the days ahead. But you know what? There are just lots of information and programs, even rituals and traditions out there that are competing against God's word for our attention. Ah, so maybe we should do a little comparison shopping. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're going to do today to discover the truth about connecting with God. All right, well, let's get to our study here on Back to the Bible. You know, many people try to connect with God by trying to connect with religion or with a religious group or a church or a synagogue or a mosque. But while that may lead to religious practice, it falls far short of actually connecting with God. Now, as I said, the majority of people around the world do believe in God. They want to believe in God. Uh, they want to know God. They want to know, does God have a personality? Is it possible to connect with God? How can we know him? And if we can connect with him, what's the way we do that? You can go to the store today and find many books, many of the arts, uh, many uh, media. There's a kind of a hodgepodge spirituality that comes out of Hollywood all the time. But you know what? Real answers are hard to come by. Isn't that true? And I don't think that's so surprising. But what is surprising is that even many religious traditions say, no, you can't connect with God personally. I want you to know, friends, that's not what the Bible says. For the majority of people of religious faith today, knowing God is not an option. Knowing him intimately is something that will never happen. But the Bible has an entirely different story. Think with me about the religions of the world. Their traditions about approaching God are very different. For example, Muslims believe that there is only one God. His name is Allah. He is superior to all of mankind, but he's somewhat distant from mankind. Allah is viewed as, as the creator of the universe and as the source of both good and evil. But he's not viewed as personally being interested in the Muslims, those who worship him. Allah is a powerful and a very strict judge. He's too great to be approached by people. So for Muslims, the idea of actually connecting with God, well, that's out of the question. It's impossible for people to have a personal, intimate relationship with Allah, even to know much about him. He's high and lifted up above all people. The Hindus have an even more difficult time in connecting with God. They worship a multitude of gods and goddesses, some 300,000 of them. Hindus believe that these diverse gods all converge into a kind of a spiritual, universal spirit called the ultimate reality, or Brahman. But the ultimate reality, friends, is not a person. Ultimate reality in the Hindu religion is not a knowable thing. It's not a loving thing at all. A Hindu's goal in life is to overcome the hardships of life through continuous and progressive higher reincarnations. Hinduism provides an explanation for suffering. The world is an evil place, but it provides no loving God able to end that suffering, or even a God who cares about that suffering. And Buddhism is uh, much the same. Buddhists don't worship any gods, so they have no incentive to get to know God. 
In fact, Buddhists believe the universe operates by the principle of natural law, so they reject the notion of a supernatural power. Life is nothing but continuous pain. It's continuous sorrow. It's continuous despair. And like the Hindus, most Buddhists secretly believe that there are hundreds and hundreds of reincarnations, and they always bring more misery. Buddhists meditate, but that's just a way to kind of snuff out the flame of desire. Buddhists lack hope because more than anything else in their religious tradition, they lack the opportunity to connect with God. Now, there are lots of people who are not Muslim, they're not Hindus, they're not Buddhists. They're 21st century people. They're a part of what they would call the New Age movement today. And the New Age movement promotes the development of the person's own power, own divinity. You know, when New Agers speak of God, they're not talking about some transcendent personal God. They're not talking about the creator of the universe. It's not the God of the Bible they're talking about. They are the only God there is, and the earth is the source of all their spirituality. So for a New Age person, to connect with God means to connect with yourself. One thing is that the self is our biggest problem. That's what the Bible says. And for another thing, connecting with ourself doesn't get us any closer to God. Now think about that. In the Bible, the Christian tradition is very different. Christians believe in a God who is a person, a God who has a personality, a God who created us, a God who sustains our lives. Christians believe in a God who loves us unconditionally and who wants to connect with us. If you're a Christian today, you practice a faith that focuses on enjoying a relationship with God and becoming more connected to Him. Now, I think that's much better much better than anything offered by any religious tradition today. You know what? Our faith is is founded on the Bible, and the Bible shows us exactly how to connect with God. So if you're looking to religion today to answer your problems, I have bad news for you. Even the Christian religion can't answer your problems, can't get you closer to God. It's not a religion, friends. It's a relationship with God. It's, It's taking the Bible at its word, how to connect with God. Now, maybe you've never read the Bible, and that's why you're having trouble connecting with God today. May I make a suggestion to you? The Bible is far more readable than everybody's told you. You can read through the Bible. Most of the books of the Bible can be read in less than half an hour. In fact, half of the books of the Bible can be read in less than half an hour. Twenty-six of them can be read in less than 15 minutes. If you really want to get a hold of God, you really want to connect with God, you need to go to the book written by God that tells you how to do that. I would read the Gospel of John. You'll find it in the New Testament. That's a good place to start. Or 1 John at the end of the New Testament. Wherever you go in the Bible, though, you'll stand a much better chance of connecting with God through His Word than you do of connecting with God through religion. Well, we're making that connection today here on Back to the Bible with Bible teacher Woodrow Kroll. I'm Tammy Weisert. Wood, the Bible, it's actually very readable, but for whatever reason, that's not what we think. So can you help us get past kind of some of these misconceptions and fears we have? Well, you know, Tammy, some people respect the Bible so much they feel it would be wrong to be able to understand it. Hmm. And other people respect it so little they feel there's nothing in it worthy of understanding. But you know, the problem for most people is simple neglect. Now, you've often heard me say that the Bible has survived the attacks of its critics, but it's being threatened by the neglect of its friends. I think sometimes our perspective is wrong. We think about the Bible as a big book of history, a, a book about the Jews, a set of do's and don'ts. Really, it's, it's God's letter to us. It reveals things about him and his character, his plans and his promises. It's a, kind of a divine email that should be read over and over again. Did you know your prayers and gifts for this ministry are helping to encourage men, women, and children, and they in turn are encouraging others? It's true. And here's what they're saying. 
Thank you for your consistently truthful teaching. I recommend Back to the Bible to everyone, especially seekers and new believers. And then this, I listen to your program at 5 a.m. on my way to work. I've recommended your program to others. It has encouraged me to read more of the Bible. And then finally, thanks for your ministry. It's a blessing and an education in God's Word. Now, as encouraging as that is, let's face it. After the rush of Christmas, well, we often experience a letdown. But there's no letting down in ministry. It's critical to encourage people with God's Word, especially now. And any gift you offer will provide a much-needed financial boost. So find out more about the ministries of Back to the Bible and give online at backtothebible.org. Or call 1-800-759-2425. <laughs> Now, let's return to our study with Dr. Kroll here on Back to the Bible. The Bible shows us that our difficulty in knowing God personally arises from our sin. It's not from God's unwillingness to connect with us. God wants to connect with us. As the prophet Isaiah observed, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God. That's Isaiah chapter 59, the first two verses. And you know what, folks, until something is done about the guilt and penalty that accompanies our sin, connecting with God is absolutely impossible. The chasm between God's holiness and our sinfulness is just far too great. And our ability to bridge that chasm, well, it's non-existent. It's just not going to happen. And yet, even though we could not come to God, He came to us. In the person of his Son, Jesus Christ, God the Son, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. John chapter 1, verse 14. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. See, God connected with us in the way we least expected it. He became a man. He died on the cross. Jesus paid a debt he did not owe. Because we owed a debt we could not pay. And God is very eager to connect with you today. But you know what? You have to connect with God the way he made the connection to you. It's when you read the Bible that God reveals himself. It's when you read the Bible that he reveals his eternal plan for our salvation. It's the Bible that reveals how to make God's heart your home. How to connect with him. The God of the Bible is not a silent God. In fact, he's been quite communicative with us. The expression, and God said, or then God said, occurs nine times in the first chapter of the Bible. God blessed them and said, that's found once. See, the Bible begins with God talking. It begins with his speaking creation into existence. The Lord often is one who talked with his prophets, telling them what to say to kings and to commoners, especially his people Israel. I think a rather obscure prophet by the name of Micaiah. Micaiah reminded King Ahab's messenger, As surely as the Lord lives, I can tell him only what the Lord tells me. 1 Kings 22, verse 14. You know, sometimes God just directed the prophet's mind through a vision or an overpowering visitation of God's Spirit. That's how he communicated with the prophets. 2 Chronicles 15, verse 1 is a good example of that. In fact, this is how God communicated to 40 different authors what he wanted included in his word, the Bible. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter 1, verse 21. The person with whom God talked, talked directly, talked personally, talked intimately, the person with whom God talked most often was his man Moses in the Old Testament. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend, Exodus 33 verse 11 says. So special was this connection between God and Moses that Deuteronomy 34 verse 10 says, since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. See, more than 75 times the Bible records God talking with Moses. Is God silent? Well, if you read the Bible, you know God isn't silent. God appears almost chatty in the Old Testament. But what about the New Testament? Is God silent there? Did he ever talk to people there? 
Well, as far as I know, the only reference to God speaking directly with someone is Jesus' parable of the rich fool. Jesus said, but God said to him, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Now, why such a talkative of God in the Old Testament? And so very little chatter from God directly in the New Testament. I think the answer is because in the New Testament, God didn't have to do much talking for himself. God the Son came among other reasons, to speak on the behalf of God the Father. Often Jesus would say things like, For I did not speak my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. So whatever I say to you is what the Father has told me to say. You can read about that in John chapter 12. Also John chapter 8, John chapter 14, lots of places. The Bible is very, very clear. In the New Testament, Jesus did the talking that God wanted done. So what about today? We don't have those Old Testament prophets. We don't have God speaking to people as he did in the Old Testament. We don't have Jesus here through whom God would speak. Why doesn't God speak in an audible voice now? Well, the Bible gives us the answer to that too. God doesn't need to speak in an audible voice now. God speaks to us through his word. How do I know that? Well, I know that because that's what the Bible says. Jesus, in fact, said, These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while I was still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. That's John 14, verses 24 through 26. See, folks, when you read the Bible, when you read God's Word, The Spirit of God uses all that Jesus said and all that God recorded in the Old Testament. He uses all of that to help connect you to Almighty God. Now think with me. If you didn't have a Bible today, what is there about God you wouldn't know? I mean, if you were left without a Bible, if there was no written Word of God, what is there about God you would not know from the world around you? There's much about God you would never know without his word. Ah, oh, sure, you may become convinced that God exists by what you see in the world. You may even philosophically come to the conclusion that order in the universe demands a, a divine designer, someone to bring this about. But if the Bible had never been written, would you think about all the things you would never know about God? Without a Bible, you would never know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Without a Bible, you would never know that God will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you, God. Without a Bible, you would never know that the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Without a Bible, you would never know that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. You wouldn't know that without a Bible. Without a Bible, you would never know that God takes no pleasure in punishing sinners. He says, do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked? But rather, the sovereign God says, am I not pleased when they turn from their ways and live? Ezekiel 18, verse 23. You wouldn't know that without a Bible. Without a Bible, you would never hear Jesus' invitation, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Without a Bible, you would never understand that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. You wouldn't know that without a Bible. Without a Bible, you would never realize that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved except the name Jesus. That's what the Bible says. And without a Bible, you would never know that there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all men. Without a Bible, you would not have God's promise that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Now, there's lots more you and I would not know if we didn't have a Bible. 
I haven't taken the time today to explore all those, but if you'd like to know them, uh, there are 15 things you and I would not know about God without a Bible. You can find them on our website, backtothebible.org. In fact, come by and, and download a copy for yourself. What we would not know about God if we did not have a Bible. See, God is not silent. He's not some distant deity way off in space there somewhere. God has spoken to us. It's possible for you to connect with God. But you have to connect with God in the means by which God has already prepared for you to connect with Him. And that is by reading His Word. Is it any wonder, friends, that here in my country we keep calling America back to the Bible? Is it any wonder that around the world this broadcast teaches God's Word every day and nothing else? Because there is no other way for you to connect with God. There is no other book on the face of the earth where you can learn about a God who loves you, a God who sent his son to die for you. You see, the Bible connects you to God himself. In all the other world religions, you may find inspiration, you may find rituals, you may find traditions. But in Christianity, you discover a relationship with a person who has spoken to you. He is compassionate, he is merciful, he is forgiving, And his word provides more than just a little spiritual path or a little spiritual philosophy. It brings to you the very words of life. And it brings to you the one who wants you to receive them. If you really want to get to know God, you can connect with him through his word. And when you read the Bible, you'll find a God who wants you to get to know him. In fact, he's eager to connect with you, perhaps even more eager than you are to connect with Him. Connecting with God through His Word. Hi, this is Tammy Weiser with Woodrow Kroll here on Back to the Bible. Now, Wood, you hit pretty hard the last few minutes on how God speaks directly to us through the Bible, and that is so important for us to understand. Yet there are many people, and I mean Christians, out there that just don't understand this, and that's a problem. Yeah, it is a problem. And, uh, you know, Tammy, one of the things we've discovered through the Center for Bible Engagement, all the research that we've been doing through this organization, one of the things we've discovered is that even Christians don't seem to know what the Bible is or what the Bible is supposed to be used for. We just don't connect the Bible with God speaking to us. That's a problem because Mm -hmm. it is his chosen method to speak to us. Right. And if we don't understand that, then we're not going to have a desire to pick it up and open it up and read it. No. And if there's no desire, of course, there's no reading either. Thank you so much for your generous giving during our December gift challenge. You know, the truth is we're still processing the mail, so we don't have an exact total yet. But know that we appreciate each and every gift. It's through your prayers and faithful giving that we reach thousands of people daily and help them grow in their faith. Now, Joe and Carol Facebooked us to say, your program is such a blessing and a challenge. Hey, challenges are good. And then Jeffrey told us this, your broadcasts bring lots of joy to me. Even though I'm new to this, I want to grow deeper in my faith. Thank you for helping me with that. Pretty cool that so many of us really want to walk closer with the Lord. Then Lori posted this. I was excited to hear about Go Tandem today in your program. Since I love the teaching at Back to the Bible, I signed up immediately. I can always use help in my spiritual walk, and this will fit in perfectly. You know, we're so thankful that Lori and many others, including you, are discovering the power of God's Word through Back to the Bible Radio and Go Tandem. And we pray that you'll get involved by supporting us with your prayers and your gifts. That's what it'll take to keep Back to the Bible going strong in 2012. Now, you can make a gift online at backtothebible.org. That's backtothebible.org. Or call us at 1-800-759-2425. That's 800-759-2425. Tomorrow, Wood, a few practical even some personal suggestions for the what, where, and how of connecting with God through His Word. Yeah, tomorrow, Tammy, we're going to talk about finding the right place to meet with God. You know, you can meet with God anywhere. 
But I find it very, very much helpful for me to meet with him every day in the same place. I get comfortable with him there. And we're going to talk about how to practically discover a place to meet with God. That's tomorrow right here on Back to the Bible. Well, thanks for joining us today. God bless you. I'm Woodrow Kroll. Have a good and godly day. Today's program is furnished by Back to the Bible. Thank you for your support.